today I thought I'd show you how I'm uh, installing a few solar lights in our trailer. So we've we've got a tradesman's trailer here that we're sort of fitting out to go camping in. What I'm going to show you is how I've done the lights. Now if the camera can pan across to that side you'll see that we have a series of lights, LED lights up over there. And the way that I've wired them in is using a bit of ducting and drilled holes in it in the ducting and then wired in each of those lights. The way the lights come is like this. They're joined together with a short piece of wire. And these are these so these ones are blue and these ones are white. These are quite bright, they've got three LEDs in for each. And then on the back they have sticky tape. So all we need to do is clean with metho where we're going to stick them and then we can stick them up. Now, the easy way to do it is do them like this and just stick them up all in a daisy chain along. But to do that we would need, let's see, three, six, nine, ten or eleven of the blue. Now I find that these are too close together. So what we've got to do is split them apart and join them. We've got a solder. So if you show down here, the first thing I did is I actually used these things here are really handy. So I think these are a Bunnings. You can click them anywhere and they're just suited, useful for all sorts of things. You never know when they're going to be handy. So what I did with this one, that will actually sit up there and all I did here even like that. So I just put this up here. Now, if you look here, this is the base. So this is going to stick up. So I've done the hole above so that you, you don't see the hole and the wire going in. So, first of all, I marked a arrow to the front so I know which way it goes back in. And then basically the whites, is, in this trailer there's five sections. One, two, three, four, five in between the supports for the roof. Oh, this is duct. So this is 16 by 16 millimeter by four meter long duct, and I just cut it to length, which was 2.2 meters or something. All I did, I put the white lights, five white lights on either side, and they'll be in the middle of each of these panels, but against the edge here. So we tested that the other night to see how they worked, and by putting them in they're fairly close to the edge when you're on this side you don't see the beam the beam is hidden and so it's not bright on your eyes so and then the blue I've got three blues so there's one at the end one about in the middle and one at the other end because that doesn't need to be very bright so all I've done now is marked on there you see here I've drilled a hole I just measured enough or more than enough for this wire. Now this little hookup wire I got from Bunnings is about either 74 or 77 cents a meter. We bought 10 meters of it. Um, it's big enough for these little LEDs but I'm using a bigger three or four mil hookup wire double insulated to go to the end of these. So this is only to join together this series here. I'm using a bigger wire to go in between. You know this is probably more than enough. What I do is I've marked all of these. I've put a B where the blue is going to go, the three of them. And the white I've just left without any mark. So that I know the other ones are white. That's that part. So we'll take this down. Now all I did then was uh, drill it out here. Just being careful to go through just the, this side and not the far side. We can see the hit it a bit hard. That's all right. So now we're ready to string through the wire. So take the top off. So if we're going to work on the, let's say the blue first, I'm going to put that through here. Leave a little bit of length. Now it doesn't hurt to have too much length because you can fold it inside this. There's more than enough for the wire to fold if you got too long. So it's possibly better 
leave a little bit extra and then we'll come out here at that one so we're going to cut it about there string that through and then we'll go so we've got the wire to the one blue, now we'll do to the end blue. Okay, there we go. Now for the white, we'll do the same, we'll start at this end. Put this through for the white, up to here. Ah, so I just should say the tools you need for this obviously is a, a drill and a drill bit of the right enough size to go through that. You want a good, these are a good little Lindstrom pair of cutters, but any little hobby cutters or larger ones would do. <clears throat> this being smaller wire, it helps to be able to be fairly small to get into there. I use these pair of strippers, I think they should be small enough to be able to on the smallest one hopefully if I pick the right size there we go there's any other sorts of strippers will do or you can just use your pliers but yeah unless they're sharp and you've had a bit of practice it's easy to cut them off by doing that you want a knife a little hobby knife Stanley knife to uh, things come all joined together and you need, just need to cut, slice them down there. Then you want some uh, double-sided sticky tape. All the lights and the tape I've actually got from my mates here at uh, Solar to Camp. Um, they run a business up here, but they're and currently they're selling these things. But you any you get these on eBay, um, I'd imagine, fairly readily. Same with the tape. Should be able to get that too. Now that's about 10 mil, I think, tape. And we use that to stick the uh, ducting up onto the top here. The other things you need is a soldering iron. I'm going to turn that on to start heating up there. I've got a little Ryobi. This is the, the cheaper one. Um, it works quite well. The, the bigger battery powered Ryobi um, has temperature control and also a space for your sponge which is a very handy thing. Mine is looking pretty dodgy at the moment because I'm not using a sponge. Anymore. And then you want some heat shrink. Yeah, you want it a little bit bigger than the size of the wire. As you can see, that's twice the diameter or more, but it shrinks down okay once you've done the joint. If you do it exactly the same size, you're not going to be able to cover the solder. So that one is too small. So you want a red and a black, ideally, of those to cover each each connection. And then you want something like this, which is a blowtorch, but the better thing would be a, uh, a hot air blower. Um, a hair dryer could even do, I'm not sure if it'll be hot enough, but it probably does. But this is a bit rough, you've got to make sure that you keep a little bit away so you don't burn the wire away. Alright, so we've got all the wires in now. I put this last one, this will be the feed. And what this will have, like I did over there, is I bought it out and down a little ways. And then it, I put a plug on. I'll show you that later. Plug or a socket for the, and the same for the blue. I don't not forget the blue. Alright, now we've got a wire out of each of these holes. I'm not sure at this end, the blue is going to be one dimmer for the whole uh, trailer. 
So I've got to work out exactly how I'm going to join this. There's going to be two more there and two more up the front. So I still haven't worked out how I'm going to wire them in. And that's why there's one at the back here. But I think that I might go this way around to the back one. We'll be the go for that. So let's start. Let's do this first one at the beginning here first. Actually, let's do the blue. We'll work on the blue. So we just want to separate each of those. Then, so we don't forget, we'll put this on now. It's up to you how you do this. Uh, I'll the blue, so we'll prepare this one. Doesn't matter which way you go with these, as long as the positive and the negative don't get mixed up. There's a small plus and minus on the LED itself. I should say on the housing for the LEDs at both ends. And the plus lines up with the red stripe on the white wire. On the other side I had a similar wire and I've just used the, the black stripe. I think was the way I did it. So basically the one with the stripe, but you could just as readily do the plain one there and the black one being the negative. So it's up to you, as long as you're consistent through the whole thing, it really doesn't matter. What we'll do first is strip back each one of these. Now I do about 10 mil there on each one. Might as well do the other end as well. And then the connecting wire. It's getting a little breezy. That's not at all ideal for doing soldering because tip down and makes it a lot harder to do the solder. Um, anyway, let's look at this. So I'm going to use the one with the black stripe and I need to put my, that's the positive. That's the negative. Okay, that's the positive with the red wire. Now what we're going to do is start around about in the middle and we're going to try and twist them together. And you want to try to get them to sit as flush as possible with no sharp bits sticking out. Now that's not too bad. Okay, now I'm just going to do one at a time. My soldering on now is full green, which means it's heated up. I've got some small solder. This is probably a bit small. This is probably a bit big. So it just means I use more of this small solder. So all we do is, we have got wind here, which is nasty as. Let me get this. Got a rag here. And you can do that and you see that's cleaned up the tip. So, we get some tin on the end of the soldering iron, touch that against the wire. And there we go. So we'll do the other one. It's just a little bit fiddly, but I so said what you're aiming for is to get it as flat as possible with no sharp bits that can poke up through the heat shrink. The heat shrink will forgive some 
there is, but if you've got some obvious, very sharp, pointy dagger solder, you it could end up, and if the other one had the same, it could end up shorting out. But you don't want that. Okay, so there we go. I've actually done that a touch too long, as you can see, the, the um, covering of that wire has pulled back a little bit. It's not a big deal here because the heat shrink will cover it. Okay, all right, so now we just let that cool down and that one's ready to go. So we'll do the other one here. Again, don't forget your heat shrink. Yeah, it takes a while. Going over and over. Positive, positive. Negative. Negative. Now, let's see if I can be clever here and do two at once. Okay, there we go. Now just for laughs, let's use a bigger solder. See if that does us any different. Okay, and there's a little pointy bit there. Okay. Both of those are, the trick is to have the solder nice and shiny and consistently cover both and as you can see there we have got only a little bit of pullback on that insulation, so that's good. So now we cover with the heat shrink. there we go so that's that's one of we've got another two of those to go and another five of those to go and I'll go through and do all them and then we'll come back and we'll attach it show you how to connect them almost there we basically finished uh, soldering and heat shrinking all of the LEDs for this side. Now I just I've just been thinking about how I'm going to do um, the front and the back because what I want to do for the for the blue ones is uh, put what have I got? I've got four, so I'll put another two in the back and another two in the front. Now to do that, I need a piece of uh, ducting. I might have to get another piece for the front I think. So what I'll do for that um, basically and the reason I need to do that now is because this here has to go in here and that wire has to come around join onto this one and go into the ones in the back here or at least be ready for it. So I need to have a look at it's going to go up in there 
and it needs to hold the cable up. I have to put it into there. And if we go to about there, it's probably about enough. Just cut that. That'll give me the length I need. I think the way that I'll do this is I've got uh, three lights here. I'm going to add another two. So I'll continue this one around the corner to run those two. And then the other one from the other end, uh, it'll come back here and come across here with these two. So that means there'll be five lights on each of the, uh, so there'll be two joiners and I'll join them together here uh, through a dimmer have a dimmer here up the top here for the basic one of these all right so these what to do is join the two here into the or the output of the dimmer which is uh, input that's the output so that plugs there into sockets they'll feed that direction for that way this direction for that way and just distribute the load so you won't have you could probably run the 10 of these easily on this cable but I always like to be conservative in the uh, in what I'm running across certain cables so so I think that's the way we'll do it so now that I know that I can finish off this bit and at least get this one up once I put the wire on that all right so we're we're day two of the putting the lights up and what I finished yesterday as you can see here we have our one two three blues and now one two three four five whites now I've also because what I'm going to do the blues are going to extend around to the back around here so I've extended this one around and it'll join another piece of ducting also at this end plugged in two circuits one for the white one for the blue so while we've got that let's just test it it's currently in circuit one but that doesn't matter because we'll um we're going to change that anyway so if you have a look there now we've got one two three blues so that's just a quick test we don't want to get it up there and find that they don't work because that's a total pain to have to once this is stuck it's not coming down again so i've got to make sure it's a good idea to make sure these work before you get them stuck to the so the other one plug that in as well the same circuit and we checked all our leds here are working which they are so now we're right to uh, double sticky back our uh, ducting up into the roof of the trailer all right so what we're going to do with that turn that off I'll just it's probably not too necessary to do this one I don't think but I'll give it a hit anyway so we use metho to give this a bit of a clean and I'll just do a quick wipe just in case it's got any dirt or dust on it while it's been sitting around yesterday and today uncovered and we'll let that dry and the next part I want to clean I'm just going to check I'm going to clean all along here so it's probably going to be a bit dirty hasn't I'm going to go over this a couple of times just to make sure it's as clean as it can be so we need to now put the double sided tape on now I did mark this front, that's our front, and now I'm going to put the double sided tape along here, so we're going to try and place this in the middle.
Okay, there we go. Thank you for that. And right now, I'm going to make sure that that's firmly attached on that side. Now we're going to make sure, first of all, that I've that everything fits okay. That's got to go up, so it's all got to go that way. Just have a dummy run at that. Uh huh. Oh, they're up a fair way. All right, so that's going to be okay. About there. Good. Need to undo the tape. And about there. Okay. So that's in place now. And I'm just Pushing it down firmly onto the steel, making sure that the double sided tape bonds. This one is going to come around here. I need to clean each of these areas here for each of the LEDs, and peel the back off them, and glue them in place. about there. Sticking these as close as I can within reason to the edge so that when the lights are on it doesn't shine out in our face. You don't want it in here because then every time you're looking here that light is going to be glaring in your eyes. So by putting it behind this ridge or the down part should be a much better result. This is, I've just added another cable. I've made it long enough to go to the control box area, but also not just to that control box at the top, but also in case that fails, because it is a it's a MOSFET device that's all in the one and the six sides all go through there. So I'm making enough length for the cable to go down to the fuse box uh, just in case um, I might need if it fails anytime I can extend it. So it's going to come across and go in some ducting and now it comes across along here and comes to the back and here it's going to go into a, uh, a socket and a dimmer for the back bright lights. Now that's one cable so I'll cut it there. Now we also need another cable. Okay so I'm running the second cable in as you can see there's two extra cables. These are four mil. Three mil would probably be heaps. It's all that my mates had at the moment. Um, so this is a bit overkill, but certainly no problem of having too much current going through this, I don't think. Okay, so that one comes to here. And again, I'll cut this off because it's going to go up into this socket here. So I'll cut that one off. Now run. All we need to do is take the cover and put the cover on. Okay, so we just push this. So we've got our cover on. Um, all that remains, just as a final check, so that you can walk away and know that this part is done. Plug this in here and I need number one on. Okay, now we should have white light all over there, which we do. We'll change that one. Then for the blue light, and now we've got our blue. Three blue. Excellent, so job done. Is the camera lady okay there? Okay, that's all right. going on behind the camera. I thought she's going to go to sleep and fall over. It's probably a bit boring. It's not cooking. Anyway. <laughs>